On the 20th of January 2025, the DeepSeq R1 model, an AI similar to ChatGPT, went live. And exactly a week later, almost a trillion dollars was wiped off the US stock market. But why? Well, because investors quickly realized that not only was DeepSeq more efficient than ChatGPT, but also open source and free. To top it off, DeepSeq reportedly cost approximately 3% of the development cost of ChatGPT. When it comes to the world of technology, AI is all anyone can talk about these days, so it pays to know a thing or two about it and how to use it well. In this video, I'll show you how to get started with DeepSeq, the correct prompt strategies to use, and go through 10 real-world use cases to take your skills from beginner to expert. We'll also get into the differences between DeepSeq and ChatGPT, and by the end of this video, you'll know how to use DeepSeq like an expert. To get started, head over to DeepSeq.com and click on Start Now. You will need to create an account, but once you do so, you'll see a message box that's very similar to ChatGPT. Let's start by learning how to correctly prompt DeepSeq using three rules. Rule number one is clarity. AIs like DeepSeq can't read your mind. Vague prompts force it to do more guesswork, which leads to more generic and sometimes irrelevant responses. Being more specific ensures that the output matches your needs. So instead of a vague prompt like help me code a website, try being more specific like write a Python script using Flask to create a login page with email validation and password hashing. Rule number two is context. Context will help DeepSeek adopt the right tone, style, and expertise when producing an output. DeepSeek can play many roles, but only if you tell it which role to play. Without context, your outputs will default to average without being more personalized or accurate. For example, instead of help me write an email, try something like act as a marketing expert, write a persuasive email for a SaaS product targeting small businesses, highlight cost savings and ease of use. Rule number three is to iterate. Rarely will you get a perfect response on the first try. So it's important to iterate to help the AI correct any mistakes and tweak the output. For example, explain quantum computing. I can then follow this up with something like, simplify that explanation for a 10 year old using metaphors. Using these three rules, you'll be able to get the best possible responses out of DeepSeek. Now let's look at 10 real world use cases that can help you not only improve your productivity, but learn new things and also improve other aspects of your life. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as it really helps a channel like this one grow. Use case number one is to use DeepSeek as a study helper. When I used this for the first time, I was actually very impressed. So say you've sat in a lecture and you've taken some handwritten notes. What you can do is ask DeepSeek to analyze those handwritten notes. So I'm gonna give it a prompt like, extract key formulas and concepts from this handwritten physics lecture image and create flashcards. One of the really good things about DeepSeek is that it shows you its thought process so you know exactly how it reached its responses. You can see that it's now interpreted those handwritten notes and it's come up with flashcards giving me a front and a back for each of the cards. Now even though I've asked it to produce flashcards, you can see that it's produced a bunch of text. It's given me the front and the back of the flashcard but I can take this one step further. I'm now going to prompt it to say create a single HTML code for these flashcards so that I can use them to study. I want to be able to hover over the cards and have them flip over, kind of like real life flashcards. Again, it'll think through my prompt and then come up with an answer. As you can see, it started producing the code that's going to render my flashcards. And there you go, it's done producing the code. One of the good things that I really like about DeepSeek is that it allows you to run the code without actually having to copy the code out of DeepSeek. So I can go ahead and click this run button and there you go, it's produced flashcards for me. And if I hover over one of the flashcards, it'll flip over and show me the answer. It's a cool little trick that might help you with studying or of course you can copy and paste the text out to create real life flashcards if you prefer. Use case number two is to use DeepSeek to summarize research papers. So here I'm uploading a research paper and I'm gonna ask DeepSeek to summarize this research paper in five bullet points. It's now going to read through the research paper and exactly as you'd expect, 
it produces five bullet points. So I uploaded a marketing research paper, and as you can see, it's come up with five bullet points, postmodern social transition, confusion and consumption, linking value concept, tribal versus individualistic marketing, and re-embedding marketing. The third use case is to use DeepSeek as a career coach. And when you go to a career coach, you probably have a bunch of questions that you wanna ask. So I'm going to make my prompt very specific. Act as a senior career coach specializing in tech transitions. I'm a data scientist with three years of experience in Python and SQL, but I want to pivot to AI ethics roles. List the top five skills I need to learn in 2025. Recommend certifications or courses free and paid. Suggest networking strategies for this niche field. Provide a six months roadmap with monthly milestones and include realistic salary expectations for entry level AI ethics roles. And there you go. Because my prompt was so specific, it's given me an answer for each of my bullet points. So here I've got the top five skills to learn. Then I've got certifications and courses, some recommendations, and even some pricing. I've got networking strategies. I've got a six months roadmap, month one foundations, month two technical skills, and so on. I've got my salary expectations in the US. It could be anywhere between 85,000 to 130,000 US dollars for this job. And it's also summarized it, giving me key takeaways. Use case number four is to use DeepSeek as a language translator. So I'm going to upload an image of a menu that's in Chinese, and I'm going to ask DeepSeek to translate that menu for me. So as you can see, this is the menu, which I can't read, but I can ask DeepSeek to translate this menu to English. And there you go, just like that, it's already converted the Chinese menu into English, and it's even given me the pricing. So now I know what I can order. Of course, for something like this, you may be using DeepSeek on your phone if you're at a restaurant and it can still do the same thing. Use case number five is to use DeepSeek as a travel planner. Now again, I'm going to be very specific with my prompt. Act as a professional travel planner for budget conscious solo travelers. I'm visiting Tokyo for five days in October of 2025 with a total budget of $800, excluding flights. Create a day-by-day -day itinerary prioritizing street food, free attractions, and public transport. Breakdown costs like accommodations, meals, and activities. Include subway routes, train lines um, between locations. List three lesser known attractions with addresses and opening hours. Add real-time October weather ex expectations and packing tips. Provide emergency info. And let's have a look at what it does. There you go, it's produced the day-by-day -day itinerary and I can take this one step further and ask it to convert it into rows and columns so it's easier for me to read. Remember, we're following the three rules of clarity, context, and iterate. Now, by asking it to change the output into rows and columns, I'm iterating so that I can tweak the output so that it's better for me to understand. Use case number six is to use DeepSeek as a health advisor. Act as a certified nutritionist and fitness coach. I'm a 28-year-old vegetarian aiming to lose 10 pounds in three months without calorie counting. Design a seven day meal plan with easy recipes, which are 30 minutes prep time max. Great, now the titles are a little bit muddled up. You can see that breakfast is here and then lunch is sort of hidden away so, and so is dinner. And I can't iterate on this to create a better looking output, but for the sake of this example, you can see how powerful DeepSeek is. Use case number seven is to use DeepSeek as a therapist. Act as a therapist, help me reframe anxious thoughts about work meetings, provide a thought record template and one grounding exercise. Now DeepSeek has done a really good job here. You can see that it's got an empathetic opening, which you might expect from a therapist. It's then given me the thought record template that I asked for, and of course, the grounding exercise. Use case number eight is to use DeepSeek as a business strategist. Create a flowchart of the lean startup methodology and write it in mermaid.js code. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to visually see the flowchart. How good is this? DeepSeek has now produced a flowchart and it's even color coded it to make it easier to understand. Of course, I can keep iterating it and there's a number of different business strategy questions that I could ask DeepSeek, but you can see it's already done a fantastic job on the first prompt. Use case number nine, which is what I think most people are currently using AIs to do, is to use it as a creative writer. 
act as a sci-fi novelist, write a short story about a sentient AI trapped in a dying server farm that escapes into a fleet of delivery drones. Now I've deliberately left it slightly open-ended. I can give it an exact length of how, how long I want that short story to be, but let's just see what it produces. There you go, it's produced a short story for me and it's titled it Scattered Wings. Maybe I shouldn't have actually given it that prompt because I may be giving it the wrong idea. <laughs> and finally, use case number 10 is to use DeepSeek as a coding assistant. Act as a senior full stack developer, create a single HTML file for a basic calculator app. I have found that sometimes DeepSeek's servers can be busy. So if you do see that message, it's probably because a lot of people are trying to use it at once. And it's done creating the code. And again, I can just run this code within DeepSeek itself. There you go, I've got a nice basic calculator and it's actually fully functioning, which is fantastic. Of course, there's probably an endless number of use cases, but I hope that the examples that I've shown you show you how powerful DeepSeek is and the best ways that you can use it. It gives you a sense for the kinds of inputs and outputs that it can actually work with. But remember the three rules, clarity, context, and iterate. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences between DeepSeek and ChatGPT. Let's start off with pricing. DeepSeek is actually free to use. ChatGPT also does have a free tier, but they do have paid tiers for $20 a month and $200 a month. DeepSeek was of course created by a Chinese-based company called DeepSeek AI, while ChatGPT was created by a US-based company called OpenAI. In terms of hardware, DeepSeek is both cloud-based and can be used locally, while ChatGPT is solely cloud-based. In terms of API costs, DeepSeek is significantly lower than ChatGPT. DeepSeek is open source, while ChatGPT is closed source, even though the name of the company is OpenAI. One of the biggest questions is whether DeepSeek uses your data to train itself. And yes, DeepSeek does do that. And what most people don't realize is ChatGPT actually does do that as well, only if you have chat history turned on. So if you do turn chat history off, ChatGPT will not use your data to train itself. DeepSeek's servers are located in China, while ChatGPT's servers are located in the US. In terms of speed, DeepSeek is moderate. And like I mentioned earlier, often the servers are busy because of the number of people using it. So you may run into that issue, while ChatGPT can be comparably faster. Now, when it comes to coding, DeepSeek is excellent, and they even have a version of DeepSeek specific for coding while ChatGPT is still great. And there you go. You now not only know the differences between DeepSeek and ChatGPT, but also the correct ways to use it. Of course, this information is constantly changing as new versions are released. If you got value from this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.